The 2022 budget statement will be the set to be presented by the MPP government since it took office in 2017 and the second in the last term of the Nanado Danko Ekufuado. It comes at a time when complaints on the state of the economy abound. Here is a country mm, mm. where the, our income only pays for salary, mm -hmm. pays for debt. Mm -hmm. And it's finished. Only salaries and interest payments. Yes. And this is the reality. Ghana is broke. The National Democratic Congress believes the problem persists because of the failure of government to embrace this opinion as a reality. The first solution to every problem is an admission that there's a problem. Indeed, there is a need for us to admit that the economy is comatose, it's in coma, and that the earlier we apply some defibrillator to reawaken the economy, the better for all of us. Otherwise, we risk you know, running into an economic depression or recession. For many, government's stance on taxation is the topmost expectation. The NPP while in opposition, campaigned on the need to scrap several taxes it described as nuisance taxes. After the party came into power, it fulfilled that promise in its first budget and scrapped about 11 of them. But the government has since then introduced new taxes and modified others. Post-COVID-19, the government in the previous budget, for instance, introduced a number of taxes, including the sanitation and pollution levy, COVID-19 health levy, and the financial sector recovery levy. A number of these levies were charged on the cost of a litre of petrol, diesel and LPG. And this has accounted for the over 2 Ghana city increase in the price build-up, which has brought the cost of fuel at some pumps to 6.9 Ghana cities per litre. Players in that field are thus hoping to see a review of some of these taxes. Commercial drivers have threatened to increase transport fares if the taxes are not reduced. Surprisingly, the leadership of these driver groups thinks otherwise. For them, scrapping their taxes would do more good than an increase in transportation fares. Operators on our part felt the more we just go out for the easiest thing to do by increasing the fares, we are weakening our own operations because people will not be able to afford the high fares again. And that wise, People will remain in the house and maybe send at least one person to go on errands for about four or five people. So the option is that out of all the number of taxes that government have on food, we had selected about four or five of them and asked government to see that some of them could be reduced and some could be scrapped. If it comes down to the 6.1, after the June closing index that we had to uh, speak on fair increment, all operators will be okay. And if further it even goes be below than that, Definitely, operators will also have the burden to also reduce our fares. While we are with the government's position on these taxes, the Ghana Revenue Authority has given an indication that a 50% and 30% reduction in the benchmark values for some products at the port will be scrapped. The Association of Ghanaian Industries and the Ghana Union of Traders Association are loggerheads over this decision. Despite these entrenched positions on the government reliance on taxation as a revenue mobilization strategy, economic analysts have stressed the need for government to be strict in its taxation agenda. Who in his right mind thinks in today's Ghana the taxes can go down? Your Minister for Information, Honorable Oponkroma, has been floating a kite for the last how many days? telling you that the taxes are going to hit hard. Debt management has been a major issue in Ghana's politics in the Fourth Republic. Ahead of the 2016 polls, the NPP chastised the then NDC government on what it described as excess borrowing. But six years down the line, the NDC is accusing the NPP of doing worse than it criticized them for. Former President John Dramani Mahama, in his speech at the end of his 2021 thank you tour, bemoaned how Ghana's debt to GDP 
had increased by 214 billion Ghana cities from 120 billion Ghana cities in 2017. The NDC says it is expecting the government to come up with innovative ways of paying off the debts and minimizing borrowing. The government in the last five years have not shown any clear strategy on how to deal with this and the debt is just ballooning. So we would be expecting a very clear strategy to deal with the debt. You recall when we were in government and we had the energy sector debts and, and a few other debts that were ballooning the, you know, the, our, our public debts. We had to strategize how to deal with it. That was where we brought the ESLA. It was supposed to last for five years. We left huge amounts of money in there, even after being able to do what we have to do. Now they have collateralized the ESLA, and we are going to be you know, paying the ESLA for the next 15 years. So you don't have any ESLA to fall on, to be paying your interests, to be paying your, your, your debt portfolios off. So what else are they going to bring? Unemployment remains one of the major challenges facing Kenyans. Despite the government's claims that over 2 million jobs have been created since 2017, analysts have revealed that the figures are nothing close to addressing the problem. The 2022 budget will thus provide an opportunity for the government to further make firm its strategy on job creation following recent comments by the finance minister that government payroll is full. The government has maintained that it has managed the economy better than the Eswa NDC government and appointees support this claim by referring to macroeconomic indicators pre-COVID-19. But some Ghanaians say the cost of living continues to rise. I'm having my national service in the Ga East Municipal Assembly. It's a private company though. Um, but um, I every day, when I'm going to work every day, I stay at Kaswa. So at least I, am, I spend um, about 70 cities a day from my house to the workplace. So um, things are very hard. I'm trying to get a place to, and we know the, um, the system we have in Accra, you can't get um, a year rent. They are taking two, two years advance, three years advance, and the least you are going to get is maybe 250. The ability of the economy to recover from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic is expected to feature predominantly as the 2021 budget aligned government's major strategies in reviving the economy, government's digitalization agenda, was a feature in the 2022 budget statement. Concerns and demands of Ghanaians ahead of the 2022 budget statement presentation vary, but ultimately, a number of Ghanaians are charging the president and the finance minister to find ways at addressing the numerous challenges facing the economy. Reporting for City News, Hansen Ajeman.